Mate, what's the overriding feeling at the moment? Plenty of uncertainty doing the rounds. What What's sort of swelling around in that head of yours right now? Um, well, just preparing for Brisbane, uh, wherever that may be this week. Um, it's We sort of knew... Oh, I've got a bit of practice last year with the uncertainty around COVID and, and when it might may or may not hit. So um, we've been prepared all year um, with the mindset of we'll play anywhere, anytime. So um, we do know our opponent is going to be the Lions at this stage. Um, and where that is, um, is yet to be determined, but we're just going about our normal prep at the moment. Unfortunately, it won't be in the NT, which uh, must be you know, yeah, obviously sad for, for you and the Indigenous guys. Uh, do you know, got any clarity as to where it might be, mate? Uh, nah, man. I, I know it's not in Victoria um, and it's not in NT, which is um, a bit saddening for me as a territory boy heading back. But um, I, I'm just keeping up to date with you guys, I think, on Twitter and everything, trying to wait for the uh, next update. So um, hopefully in the next 24 hours, we should have more clarity. But um, I don't think it'll be in NT or Victoria. Stephen, 10-1 and one now, you, you must um, feel great around the group and you've got another big challenge this week against the Lions after yeah, handling a, a pretty good opponent on Friday night as well. Yeah, the Lions are flying. I think they've won um, maybe six or seven in a row. Um, they uh, certainly look very potent um, in all areas of the ground. They don't really look like they have a weakness at this stage. So, um, you know, the, the challenge only, only gets harder, I guess. Uh, we, we, we took on the Doggies last Friday and um, now I've got the Lions, who are probably the most informed team in the comp. Stephen, have you watched um, much of the Lions matches this year? What do you make of um, the likes of Hipwood and Danaher? Like, what are your memories from playing on those players? Uh, yeah, I've watched, I've watched a bit of the Lions when I can, and um, they have a pretty strong, uh, potent attack. And uh, you're throwing Mick Stay in there as well with Hitwood and Danaher. Um, they have a pretty, you know, they're th three very uh, good forwards, and then you have Charlie Cameron and Lincoln McCarthy who can take marks as well. So um, they're pretty complete um, in attack. So we, us defenders will certainly have our, our work cut out for us. But um, I think Danaher has slotted into that team nicely, and um, um, you know he's, he's looking like he's getting a bit of confidence, so it certainly be a big challenge this week. So can you talk to us a bit about sort of the selfless attitude? We hear a lot about the Demons at the moment and what that sort of means defensively and just guys playing their role and you know, getting the wings through that. Yeah, I think that's been our biggest um, improvement this year and the buy into the team defence and, and doing something for someone else. Um, you're seeing genuine uh, joy for seeing your teammates do well. Um, there's no selfishness and everyone get, um, everyone's getting a turn. I, I mean, Clayton Oliver's been pretty good this year, but um, the best players have been passed around a bit and our whole midfield and defence and forwards, everyone's stepping up and taking their turn. But I think it hasn't relied on one individual. It's um, been a whole team approach and team effort. And um, I think that's the most pleasing that, you know, even though you may not be best on ground, um, you played your role the best for the team and everyone knows that we appreciate that. How important has sort of the intercept marking been and the abilities, I guess, to score from that and some turnovers in general? Yeah, the intercept marking is actually a reflection of our pressure up the field. Um, you know, we, our whole back six, uh, you know, really relish the chance to intercept the ball and, and help propel our attack, but it's nowhere without our forward pressure and our mids getting back to help. So, um, you know, I, I guess that is the, the sort of the sexy number in terms of intercept marks and possessions, but um, it isn't made possible without the pressure up the field. And as you saw last week against Adelaide, uh, we were a bit down in that area and, and so were intercept possessions. So, um, that isn't a reflection of our defence. I think it's a, def a reflection of our whole team defence. Thanks. No doubt, um, Stephen, the belief was already there. But what does, uh, you know, defence really stood tall against the best attacking team in the competition? What does belief do in the wake of that win over the dogs? Uh, I think it's um, incredible for our group in terms of the maturity to... Um, believe the, and back the, the game plan from the coaches. Um, after losing to the Crows, um, it's, you, can, you can be a bit flat, um, you know, after being on such a good run. But our ability to reset as a group and coaching staff and implement a game plan against the best attacking team in the comp at Marvel Stadium as well um, instills a lot of belief back into the group, um, that's for sure. And um, I couldn't have been prouder of uh, how the coaches went about it and then um, even, even more proud of how the players executed the game plan on the night. You're preparing to be away for maybe an extended period again. Like, how important was the, the hub last year just for the connection of this group going forward into this year and the, the great start that you've had? Yeah, you've heard a lot about um, teams becoming closer in the hub and 
and um, we're, we're no different. Um, you know, we, we're living in each other's pockets, and um, the families are up here. We got to meet everyone. Um, it, 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 it has brought the group closer in a, such a um, shorter period of time, I guess, for me because I'd only just joined the club before then. So um, it fast tracked a lot of those relationships, but. I think we did pretty well in the hubs in terms of how we performed and prepared for games, um, no matter what the circumstances were. So um, whether it's a week, two weeks or a month, we don't really know. Um, but we're, we're glad that we've uh, been able to play some consistent footy to put us in this position that um, whatever happens coming forward, we feel like we're best prepared to attack it. So um, yeah, I, I, I can't comment anymore because um, who knows where we'll be next week and the week after. Stephen, if it's um, been a sort of a, a strange time given all this upheaval over the last seven days has come ahead of games against the Western Bulldogs and then Brisbane, I mean, arguably your two biggest games of the last six weeks. I mean, do you actually talk about it at all, about how to adjust or is it part of the, the reset? You keep talking about the club and the maturity this year that you guys can just adapt and roll without having to really focus too much on all that external stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um... Goody ha uh, has knocked that on the head pretty quickly any um, time there's been any chat about um, where we'll be playing or who we'll be playing and he actually brought that up at the start of the season, start of the preseason, even though um, COVID was looking like it was disappearing and uh, we're going to have a pretty uh, uninterrupted season. But So we've just gone back to our original um, game plan or I suppose or, or vision for the year and that was to play anyone anywhere um, and be prepared under any um, conditions. So. Um, I think we just reset, like like you just said, we just reset after each game and, and attack it as it comes. And um, you know, we are playing two of the better teams or two of the best teams in in this fortnight. But um, I think everyone's and under the same conditions. You know, the doggies were in isolation as well, so there's no excuses for that sort of stuff. And um, Brisbane don't even know where we're playing this week either, so I don't feel like there's any um, advantage for them either. I just want to take you back a few weeks, Stephen, to an unfortunate elbow from Tom Hawkins. Yeah, wasn't he exactly? Yeah, how um, was it a scary moment for you? And did you have any concerns about your vision? Because it didn't look great with all the blood gushing out at that particular point. Yeah, it was. Um, it was unexpected. I just remember trying to tackle him, and the next minute I was on the ground with a, a swollen face. So. Um, yeah, I did have a bit of worry, uh, a few worries about my vision because I couldn't open my eye for a few days because of the swelling. So. Um, <laughs> that was a little bit scary, I guess. I'd never been in that sort of situation, but the doctors assured me I'd be fine and it's just swelling. Um, and then I was lucky enough to get back in a, in a couple of weeks and, and um, get back into the team because um, when the team's going well, it's certainly a place you want to be and you want to be a part of it. But it um, seems to be healing nicely now. I've had my checkups with the surgeon and everything looks all good apart from this um, little scar. The vision came back after a couple of days and sort of, I guess a great relief, obviously. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, just being able to open your eyes is a huge relief. Um, <laughs> having no vision for a couple of days was a little bit scary, but um, it's, all, it's all back to perfect now. Great, thanks. Ben, can I just ask about your actual relationship with Jake Lever? Obviously, the tag team is working fantastically well down there. Do you guys hang out much away from footy? Uh, obviously, Jake moved back to Melbourne from Adelaide, close to family, etc. I mean, what's the relationship like? Um, we have a really we have a really good relationship as does the whole back six and seven. We're um, extremely close. Jake's sort of um, in a weird way like the, like the father of the group. He's a very mature old guy for a 24 or 25 year old. Um, very serious, very disciplined. Um, loves loves footy. Loves um, researching everything he can, and um, we love having him. He's, we it's a bit of a fun. Uh, it's a bit of a love hate relationship. We're always taking the Mickey out of each other, but um, comes to game day and. Um, we all get we all worked uh, well together. That's for sure. And um, I think over the last couple of years, Jake and I have started to understand each other's games a bit better and um, been able to help us both um, play better footy. Well, I was going to say that you both probably had what you could term maybe a rocky start when you arrival at the club. I mean, Jake had an injury, and obviously we know what you went through and all that sort of stuff. I mean, did it take that time? And did you guys decide to spend more time together, knowing because you knew what your roles were going to be when you got to the club? You knew you were going to be playing a lot together. You knew how any time together just to sort of work on that sort of off-field to make sure the on-field work well? Um, not really. Off-field was always pretty good. It was just the on-field jumping into each other and spoiling each other, um, trying to trying to do too much, I guess, and not trusting each other to do our job. And um, I think it was more the pre-season, having both, both of us being able to do a full pre-season together along with the rest of the back line um, to really grow and understand each other 
um, made all of our lives a lot easier and um, certainly that helped uh, Jake and myself come, come the season. Stephen, how's um, Ed Langdon's head going? Um, or how's he going after that head knock? And who do you think will replace him this week? Yeah, Lang, Lang is uh, he's in the concussion protocol. Um, I haven't seen him. And we have been a limited time at the club uh, for this lockdown. Um, so he'd be, I think he'd be going okay. Um, just you know the new the new rules and stuff. And I've already had had one of those, so I understand. And um, he is a fantastic player. He's been awesome for us. So um, we will miss him this week, but. Um, next man up, well, I don't know who it could be, we, whether we throw a mid, uh, an inside mid out to the wing or someone like an Oscar Baker uh, uh, in the VFL who's been playing well could come in. Um, regardless though, whoever that is, um, our, the role and the expectation of that wing role is pretty clear and whoever comes in to fill that role, um, we have an enormous trust in, that, in the rest of the team to help them execute their role. Stephen, the team's gone through a big upturn this year. Was it a challenge to to get the belief that you could beat the good teams consistently, and and how have you done that? I think we've uh, last year we we put we built I uh, built a lot of trust in the hub and um, a little a lot of trust in the game plan um, through the coaches and having um, Adam Muse come in and um, have put a different spin in the midfield type stuff took a little bit for us to understand, but I think everyone's. Uh, really grasping um, the game plan now that the coaches put together and we have a lot of belief. We've, we believe that we can beat anyone given we play the right way um, and that is on the back of team defence. Um, some weeks when we've lost stoppages or, or haven't been as effective inside um, forward 50, we've still been able to scrape wins away because of our, our ability to defend the ground. So um, as long as that's on, um, we feel like we're comp we can be competitive in every game. But as you saw a couple of weeks ago, um, when you're off just you know 10%, um, teams can put up a big score against you. And Maisie, as someone who, who hasn't experienced finals footy, do you start to think about it or start to believe what might be later this year? Uh, no, I'm a bit different. I'm a very, um, I suppose, pessimistic in terms of uh, I'm always hoping we win. I'm always nervous we're going to lose type of player. Um, I sort of play like that on the edge. I'm never, I never get comfortable. I'll never be comfortable until it's the night before the first final. So um, that's still a long way away. It's only round 11, so halfway mark. and. Um, anything can happen. So, um, no, Clint, there's no way I'm, uh, <laughs> given my career so far, there's no way I'll be penciling any finals just yet. I'll, I'll be waiting to the eve of the first one if that comes. Might do the last one, guys, if you don't mind. Yeah, so, guys, just, so can I just confirm, you're just waiting by the phone to find out where you're going this week? You, you literally don't know? I mean, is everyone, is that what it is? And do you, I mean, do you, do you want to get up there three days before two days? What's, what's the go there? Uh, as I said, whatever gets thrown at us, we'll attack. Um, we're, we're, our coaches and our, our GM have done an incredible job of shifting a player's focus to just training and preparing for Brisbane, um, and trusting that they will do what's best for, the, for us players to wherever we're going and wherever we're staying and how many days before is, is irrelevant. That's, that's their job and we're going to do our job and prepare for Brisbane. And um, I suppose the coaches have done, have done a good job at uh, shifting our focus and stop us from worrying about that and let us just focus on preparing for the game. And, and whatever happens, happens. I had a quick one, sorry, on Hawkins again. Did you, did you hear, uh, get a call from him or anything or a message? Just to, I guess sort of a bit of apology or something? Yeah, Tom Hawkes, he's a really good man. Um, he messaged me twice after the game and um, he messaged, he got my number off. Shannon Burns is our runner. Um, he, he's a, I've played on talk for most of my career. He's, he's a terrific competitor, very humble man. Um, and I knew it was an accident. So I, I, I sort of knew he was going to reach out to me, which I really appreciated. Thanks, Maisie. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, guys.